This week, it's kids and teachers, government-created monopolies, product access changes, and disbelief is one nation's ambition to be tobacco-free has them reconsidering Swedish snooze. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape. Five on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 11th of June, 2021. As you all probably know by now, New York and New York are run by a dumbass prohibitionist and a wannabe monarch because they both boondoggle public health with harm reduction flavor bans. Well... Now these idiot kingpins are in for a rude awakening. They ban the off-ramp from the smoking highway in the name of protecting the kids. And doing so ensnared 3.3 million smoking adults into continuing their combustion. Then they decided to legalize smoking marijuana for recreational purposes. So, what do you think was going to happen? Seriously, what do you think the kids are going to go do now? It's taken less than three months for the health department to come out with a report that says one in five kids are now smoking weed. Here we go. I can already see how this is going to be twisted to fight against harm reduction products. Flavors drove kids to becoming potheads. Well, I don't need to, because Fox 5 is already conflating the issue, warning its viewers that kids who smoke weed are especially vulnerable to nicotine. What? Meanwhile, in Kuala Lumpur, a man and his videographer wife are scheduled for a July 16th trial after posting a viral video of their two-year-old child inhaling from a vaping device. If convicted, they could be looking at up to 20 years in jail and a maximum fine of 50,000 Malaysian ringgits. It's no surprise vaping remains a hot topic across the globe. And for our next story, in Southern Arizona, as nearly 180 teachers headed to Eastern Arizona College for their required summer free classes, there were more than 100 different classes to talk about in this article, right? When they were writing the article, there was over 100 different classes they could have been talking about that these teachers are going to take. They could have been talking about, you know, things like, oh, I don't know, classroom management or de-stressing techniques, or maybe, I don't know, something important like trauma recognition. I mean, the list is almost endless, right? They had over a hundred different classes for these teachers to be able to go and take as part of their continuing education requirements, right? So what did the EA Courier focus on? They focused on talking about a licensed clinical social worker holding up a bottle of vaping juice so she could describe the differences between regular vape juice and vape juice that has marijuana in it. She said regular vape juice looks like water and cannabis juice looks like oil. Well, I, I, I think we could get a little excited about that. We actually have somebody that is sitting here teaching people to recognize there's two different things at play here, right? Finally letting the readers know there's two different things going on here. Two different types of vaping devices are being utilized and how these teachers need to recognize them as being two different things, right? Wrong. Because in the article, 
They said that even the weed carts have nicotine in them. So expect kids to have increased heart rates and breathing rates and high blood pressure. Then they went on to say that there was a distraught mother who found her son acting like he had schizophrenia. He's super paranoid. And he's jumping out of the car when he's driving down the street. And when they're at home, he just goes out the front door and starts running down the street for no reason. And the mom just doesn't understand and doesn't know what's going on. So the social worker had to tell these teachers that it was the THC concentration causing the hallucinations, the delusions, and psychosis. So that's why everyone needs to help and be proactive against vaping because vaping is an identified problem. So with that kind of logic, drunk drivers who crash, 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 or they run over people, they're not the problem. Alcohol abuse, well, that's not the problem either. Cars are the problem. We need to ban all vehicles because it's the vehicles that killed the people, right? It wasn't the drunk driver. It wasn't the person driving the car. You can't even advocate for smart cars that drive themselves with that kind of mentality. Just ban the cars, ban all vehicles. Everybody should walk or ride a bike. Germany approves tobacco and e-cigarette tax hike. Yep. A pack of 20s are now going to cost the residents of Germany an extra 10 cents. Meanwhile, a 10 milliliter bottle of e-liquid is going to go up a dollar 60. Oops, I mean 1.6 euros. Oh, and these increases, these tax increases yeah, they're going to happen again next year. Man, the year after that. And the year after that. And the year after the first tax increase, the one that's after this one, well, the tax increases are going to double. Uh-huh. Both of them. So in 2026, that's going to be an extra 2.3 euros of tax on harm reduction products. But combustion, that's only an extra 15 cents a pack. Naturally, trade associations are fighting this and complaining and saying how unfair this is. But the complaints fall on deaf ears as politicians only care about the money that this is going to generate. They don't care about the one in four Germans who smoke regularly. Well... They do, kinda. They only care about the fact that they're a source of revenue. But public health consequences of this ridiculous, unequal taxation, they're simply just flushed away. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the land down under, vaping product access changes are coming your way. Give it to me. Mm hmm Despite there not really being much of a change on nicotine for you, the end user, the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia is urging all pharmacists to be aware of the potential landslide of vapors who will be coming to them looking for nicotine and vaping supplies after the 1st of October, I mean, there are 200,000 Australians using vaporized nicotine to stay away from durries. That's combustible tobacco death sticks for us Yanks. Yeah. PSA National President Chris Freeman encourages pharmacists to prepare to manage these changes and support the potential 200,000 new customers they have despite there not being any liquid nicotine in the current pharmaceutical supply chain. 
It is essential that we are guided with appropriate resources, including clinical guidelines and practice support tools to assist our patients. That's what he's telling everybody. More like you have no idea where you're supposed to get the unapproved product mm -hmm, that you are now charged with dispensing. And since this is an opportunity for the pharmacist to make more money, the TGA needs to establish standards and guidance for safety and quality requirements. Mm -hmm. Chris Freeman sounds more like a politician and a salesman than he does a pharmacist. Does this guy actually know anything about dispensing drugs? Or is he just another profiteer like all the American healthcare monopolies profiteering on the misery of their barely kept alive customers? Whoops. You know, speaking of monopolies, China is reshuffling the e-cigarette industry as it is folded into the already existing tobacco monopoly. There is so much monopoly at play here. I almost don't know where to start. <laughs> China makes 90% of the planet's vaping products. Yeah, you heard that right. 90% of all the vaping products on the entire planet come from China. And in China, the government and big tobacco, well, they're one and the same. The State Tobacco Monopoly Administration and the China National Tobacco Corporation, run by the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, and colloquially it's known as China Tobacco, is both the agency in charge of tobacco regulation and the manufacturer of tobacco products. Well, since the governments around the world are increasingly regulating these products. Well, China decided to amend and implement regulations of their own. This is what all the big fuss was about. This was why all the electronic cigarette stock prices just went poo, because everybody went, oh, China's going to start regulating things. That's called uncertainty. And the financial markets are just going nuts over it, right? They did this in order to strengthen the supervision of new tobacco products. That was the general statement that was put out. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how the PMTA process is supposed to ensure the safety of all vaping products for the American consumer. Except there aren't any approved yet. Well excluding those that were submitted by tobacco giants like Philip Morris and the ICOs. Do you see the monopoly situation staring at you in the face once again? There's even talk of licensing and taxes being imposed in China by the Chinese government. Considering the domestic market is already worth $1.3 billion and China exports over $8 billion of vape gear every single year, I guarantee you the industry is not going anywhere. However, it is obvious to me that China values the export and the domestic market value of vaping. And in order to keep this market share, I guarantee you they will do whatever it takes to keep the money rolling in. If this means purification and consolidation, then I guarantee you they will be doing it. And we're not talking about some chump change here, ladies and gentlemen. This is a big economic crutch for China. Not so much as in a crutch to keep them moving along, but as in if all these people that work in this industry in China were to all of a sudden lose their jobs, 
Do you know what kind of economic impact that would have on the country as a whole? 90% of the vaping products in China are exported for the rest of the world to consume. I guarantee you they want to keep that inflow of money for all these exports continuing day in, day out, month by month, year by year. There's no question about it. Vaping is not going anywhere. Shenzhen IVPS technology and S'more International are not going to let Philip Morris and British American Tobacco take away this entire cash crop of China from the motherland. Or more like the Chinese government is not going to allow their domestic companies to be bullied out of the global harm reduction marketplace. Mark my words, despite the scare stories undermining public health, vaping is not going anywhere. Oh, and the truth about why India banned vapes, that's going to come out too. But that's a story for another day. Because in the UK, vaping stores are seeing record sales post the COVID lockdowns as more and more people kick the habit to improve their health. Furthermore, British American Tobacco recruited 1.4 million brand new customers in the first quarter of this year alone. Brand new customers to their tobacco harm reduction products. They didn't report how many of these customers were using their combustible products before. But it doesn't change the fact that they have set a target of 50 million non-combustible customers by 2025. And in the name of Expedient, the highlighted advocacy group for this week is wevape.org. So you know what I'm going to say next. There ain't nothing to it but to get into it. All right, first story of the day comes from Fox 5 out of New York. New York City Health Department warns of increased marijuana use among children. Hmm, I wonder why that's going on right now. I just can't seem to figure it out. They went and they banned the safer harm reduction product. Obviously, because, you know, they want to get their tax money. We, we need our tax money. And if you guys stop smoking, we have no source of revenue. So we need to do something about that. So let's ban the flavors, get people back to smoking. Well, people are giving up smoking anyway, whether you make it easy for them or not. So what did the state decide to go do? Because they obviously need more revenue. Well, let's legalize marijuana for recreational purposes. And then we can tax that too. Sounds great, right? Well, here we go. Now we have the New York City Health Department warning doctors there's a concerning increase in youth that are smoking pot. Mm hmm. In an email obtained by the New York Post to city public health officials, Department of Health Chief Medical Officer Michelle Morse warned almost. One in five students admit to smoking weed, a trend closely followed by electronic cigarettes that are now banned. Mm hmm. A lot of them have shifted over to weed, just smoking pot. Dr. Kathy Ward, a pediatrician with Big Apple Pediatrics, said, and a lot of them were smoking e cigarettes and hookahs and jewels. I think it's availability that's the appealing thing to them. So it's the availability, and it was never the flavors in the first place. The truth does come out in the end, doesn't it? Yeah. 
I'll be a link in the description below. I'm not going to harp on things today. I'm bringing it out there. I'm bringing my cynicism, but I got a gig this weekend to get ready to. I don't have time to sit there and harp on these things because these people those don't give a shit. Here's a perfect example of two people that just don't give a shit. You probably heard about it. This was two months ago, three months ago. There was a couple. They're what, 23 and 20 through, 21 and 23 years of age. And they decided that they were going to make a little video of their two-year-old child inhaling from their vaping device that no sources bothered to release what was in that vaping device. But we're still going to say it was vaping that these two decided to corrupt their child with. Two-year-old. <sighs> Needless to say, there has been a court date set. And if found guilty, they could face a maximum of 20 years in jail and 50,000 Malaysian ringgits for the fine. Moving on. Vaping is a hot topic at the CETA presentation. This is the Southeast Arizona Teachers Academy. Uh-huh. Roughly two dozen teachers attended the Southeast Arizona Teachers Academy Monday. And to, they did this so they could receive the latest information on vaping. A dangerous trend spreading throughout the nation's schools. Notice how they had to put that little last section in there because it wasn't interesting enough for you to keep reading the article. 180 teachers headed to Eastern Arizona College to pick and choose from 100 free classes that they could possibly take for their continuing education requirements. So, what did this article end up focusing their entire time on? Well, of course, it's got to talk about vaping and about how there's so many kids that are doing it and how it's so horrible. Normally, I just skip over some ridiculous article like this one. But to be honest with you, this is the first article that I came across that actually differentiated between nicotine vaping and CBD or THC vaping, as they call it. And they talked about the concentration. And the concentration is what causes the damage. It isn't the nicotine and it isn't the THC. It's the concentration of that item or that particular drug in the device that is causing the problem. You see, if you have something that was meant to be given sublingual beneath your tongue, absorbed through the blood vessels in your mouth, and you were to take that and vaporize it and inhale that like they do with crystal meth, you're going to get a much more intense reaction regardless of what it is that you consume, consume when you take that directly into your airways and your bloodstream. They actually did differentiate between the two of them as they were teaching the teachers how to recognize one over the other. That's the first time I've ever heard anybody differentiate between the two. In common sense, one looks like water is how they described it, and the other one looks like oil is how they described it. There'll be a link in the description below. I'm not going to harp on this. The danger is always in the dosage, regardless of what you're talking about. My coffee that I love... The danger is in the dosage. If I have two cups of coffee a day, I, I, I'm having nothing but pleasant effects from it. It's good for my health. The antioxidants that are contained in the caffeine are wonderful. But if I were to take this coffee 
and then I would take and make a espresso, a double shot of espresso in that same cup, well, then it's not going to be a very healthy thing for me to consume, especially if I have five, six, eight, or ten of them a day. But just regular coffee, it's a different story because it's a different dosage. Moving on. This one pissed me off. Well, we knew it was coming. Germany, you German vapors, I'm sorry you lost your battle. You're getting taxed to oblivion, just like we are in the States, just like the rest of the world is little by little. Well, I do think that the taxation rate is ridiculous. And like I said last week in the news, cigarettes, the excise tax on cigarettes are not going up. Well, technically, they are. But if you're already paying, oh, I don't know, eight bucks a pack and it goes up 10 cents, is that any kind of a tax increase? Technically, yes. But so what if you're a smoker? You could afford that 10 cents. You might not even notice it. But if you're going out there and you're buying a little 10 mil bottle of juice, for your tank. And that price of that 10 mil bottle just went up a dollar sixty. One point six euros. I guarantee you you're gonna notice that price increase. What is the goal here? It's supposed to be the other way around. Harm reduction products should get the ten cent tax added. The deadly combustible tobacco should have got the dollar sixty tax. Why are they doing it backwards? Oh, because they want to have them after all these tax increases going to take place for them to all be even. So when they get done doing all these tax increases, 50 years down the road, and a 10 mil bottle is going to cost you a hundred bucks and a pack of cigarettes is going to cost a hundred bucks. Then they'll be happy because there's only going to be a handful of people still paying that kind of ridiculous price on it. They're just going to eliminate the whole thing. That's what their goal is. And don't get me wrong. I don't have a problem with everybody switching to vaping and in a generation or so it's falling out of favor. And people not using it because it's very easy to quit the nicotine in these things. And once you quit the nicotine, that's the one thing I've consistently seen since I joined the community of vapors, the community of ex-smokers. That's the one thing I've seen consistently, especially when you're on Reddit. There's constantly somebody every day saying, thank you. I use vaping to quit smoking. I've been vaping for five years, seven years, 10 years, two years, one year. I want to thank you all for all the help you guys gave me. I want to thank you guys for, you know, helping me through this transition. But I think it's time for me to finally give it up. Every day you go on there and you can find a story about somebody that successfully quit smoking using vaping technology. And then after they quit and they felt the confidence of not needing it anymore because they tapered themselves down to zero, they leave. Moving to the land down under, the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia is urging all pharmacists to be aware of regulatory changes to nicotine vaping, which will come into effect on the 1st of October of this year. Changes on the scheduling of nicotine as prescription-only medicine will mean liquid nicotine commonly used in vaping can only be legally supplied domestically by the pharmacist upon presentation of the prescription and evidence of a TGA-approved method. That's different than what I was reading earlier. What I read earlier is you could choose when you get your prescription from your doctor if you're going to go to the pharmacy and get it or if you're going to import it with the prescription that you have. You've needed the prescription for quite some time. The difference is now they're going to actually enforce it. And they're going to give the pharmaceutical companies and the pharmacists that run little drugstores 
Well, they're going to give them the opportunity to make some money off of it, too. By letting you go to them for your nicotine. And here we have the national president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia, Chris Freeman, encouraging all pharmacists to prepare to manage these changes and support the 200,000 Australians estimated to be using vaporized nicotine. I don't think all of them are going to be going to the pharmacy to get them. I think these people have been importing it. The ones that have been doing this for a while have already been importing it for quite some time. And unless you force them to, they're probably not going to go into your store to get nicotine as long as they can keep getting it from the place they used to get it from. However, with the flood of companies that are closing in the United States because of all the restrictions here and all the bans, and all the other problems, like shipping items, might be a good thing if you live in a little rural area, if there's a local pharmacy, for that to be another place where you could legitimately get your products from. I mean, you are a stone throw away from New Zealand. There's a lot of people in Australia getting their nicotine from New Zealand, and they're not getting it from the States. So, as another option... I think this is a good thing for Australian vapors. But as far as the complexity of the situation and as far as knowing what you're actually going to get when you walk into the store, you have no clue because they have no clue. And this article proves it. The TGA still hasn't specified what the actual requirements are going to be. They haven't put out guidelines for the pharmacists. The pharmacists from their normal supplier don't have access to this kind of stuff yet. So if you live in a neighboring town, you might want to go in. If you plan on buying your nicotine from the local pharmacy, you might want to go in and have a conversation with the pharmacist because you probably know more about it than they do. Moving on. Here we have another article coming from Filter Mag. We've been talking a lot about monopolies in this world because that's the way that everything's going. That's what capitalism does. Monopolizes all the people with all the money and then everybody else is just left at the bottom. Well, I hate to tell you, but there's lots of monopolies already in place and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't change it. You thought that you were doing good. That's the biggest fallacy in the United States. Biggest fallacy. The American dream, anybody can get rich. Anybody, if you work hard and you put in the time and the effort, you can go get rich. You know how many people actually do that? You you know someone, let me know. I don't know anybody. I know a lot of people put their ass on the line and they bust their ass 24-7 and all they do is get into more and more debt. Well... In the big picture, in the big scheme of things, that's not what's going on. There's monopolies going on all over the place. Like the fact that I didn't realize. I mean, I knew it was a lot. But I did not realize that 90% of the vaping products consumed on the planet come from China. 90%. And to be honest with you... That number is probably going up, not down. Because a lot of the places that I knew about that did the high-end stuff, well, those were either local to certain areas and regions or came from small companies that manufactured one-offs or custom ones. We've seen a couple of them. Well, the new regulations in the United States, they closed up shop. They're done. There's ones you can get from Russia. You can get plenty of them from Germany. Maybe in your country where you're watching this from, you know of a company that's going around making these devices. But all the mass manufacturing of these products come from China, everywhere, 90%. 
of the products that is consumed on a global scale come from China. And 90% of the products that China manufactures is exported. So do you think that the government of China is going to let that just disappear or stop growing? I mean, they are trying to do what every single country all around the world is doing. They're trying to make sure that their citizens have a good economy that they can live in and be happy. Money makes the world go around. Well, China's not going to let this go on. You look around all the glo- all around the globe, especially in the United States, PMTAs are going through. No product is going to be allowed to stay on the market without market authorization from the federal government. I mean an agency of the federal government, right? Do you think that China is going to say, oh, wait a minute, why, why are all these places shutting down? We need to keep these citizens of ours employed and happy and healthy. What do you mean? None of you are, none of you are submitting your stuff in? You think they're going to let that happen? No. If there's a way for them to grow the marketplace, they're going to grow the marketplace. And if the country government, your government of the country comes in and says, what do we need to do to make this happen? Then that's what they're going to do. It's a national security interest for the Chinese government right now. They can't have all these people that worked in all these factories and produced all these harm reduction products all of a sudden be out of a job because the American government says, well, you don't, you got to do it this way. And then you have the Canadian government says, well, you got to have child resistant compliant certification from us. And then you have all the other countries around the world going, well, we have our own regulations. We need to do this and we need to do this. You you think that they're just going to lose all that opportunity, market opportunity? They're not going anywhere. They're going to do whatever it takes. If they have to consolidate all of these companies in the background, they're going to do it. And especially now that it's on the stock exchange, this isn't going anywhere. Yeah, it's going to change. It's not going to look like it did. When you, when you five years down the road, look back at today, it's going to look like a completely different environment. But it's not going anywhere. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to check out this article from Filter Mag. Here's some more in-depth detail about it from Vape, Vape Hong Kong. They're talking about the reshuffle of the e-cigarette industry and how China is in the background pulling the strings, making the changes happen. And even in China, this is going to displace tobacco combustion. You can stop a revolution, but you'll never stop evolution. Change that's meant to happen, disruptive technologies come into play. You cannot change and stop that and put that back in Pandora's box. Once the box is open, it's open and the whole world knows about it. You can either capitalize on the opportunity or die trying. Kind of like their mentality of quit or die for us ex-smokers well there are places in the world where you do have health ministers that actually listen to the constituents and they don't go around thinking that they're king tut dictating what the world should do and exactly how it has to happen here we have an official from new zealand associate health minister dr Ayesha Veral is doing well to engage with a broad range of health entities. This is Nancy Lucas, the leading tobacco harm reduction advocate, keenly awaiting the government's final smoke-free action plan. Ministerial diary records show that Dr. Veral had teleconferences ahead of releasing the Smoke-Free Air Terra 2025 action plan. She had a meeting with several groups. The groups were very supportive of vaping's role in smoking cessation. It's very encouraging then that the Dr. Veral is prepared to listen 
to their on-the-ground experiences before finalizing her smoke-free action plan. And this comes directly from Aotearoa Vapors Community Advocacy. If we are to achieve the country's decade-long smoke-free ambition, then vaping's role needs to be elevated in the public policy and programs. Otherwise, we will never get there. Thankfully, we now have a minister with considerable public health experience who understands the practice of tobacco harm reduction. New Zealand has led the world many times before, but sadly on this occasion, anti-vaping influences got into the head of Ms. Salisa. In the end, last year, Smoke-Free Environments and Regulated Products Amendment Act was a missed opportunity. Vaping is a major reason why New Zealand is now enjoying record low smoking rates, but we have a long way to go. In the meantime, AVCA feels increasingly confident that this minister will deliver a smoke-free action plan that ensures good access to vape products and programs for those Kiwis desperate to quit smoking. We look forward to the final version, says Nancy Lucas. Moving on, because I'm sure you got the gist of that. Vaping scare stories undermine international efforts to curb smoking. Yep, World Health Organization once again is stirring up controversy by granting Indian Health Minister Harsh Vardhan a prestigious award for the World No Tobacco Day held on May 31st. Stunningly, World Health Organization Chief Tedros Adhoman explicitly tied the award to the successful effort to ban electronic cigarettes in India a controversial move which has been described as own goal. Own goal by harm reduction advocates. One journal is compared to World Health Organization's choice to reward Verhan's anti-vaping advocacy to awarding the Nobel Peace Prize for banning peace talks. Warning that the World Health Organization's short-sighted stance on vaping could cost countless lives in India and beyond. The World Health Organization's misstep is just the latest example of public health officials and policymakers ceding to panic rather than examining the scientific evidence. India banned the sale of electronic cigarettes two years ago as a knee-jerk reaction to panicked reports of a rise in teen use in the United States. Follow the science. With an estimated 15% of deaths worldwide attributed to smoking tobacco, any strategy that leads to the reduction in combustible tobacco use is critical. Vaping is 95% less harmful than smoking and only a half a percent is likely to present a risk of cancer. Less than 1% cancer risk. And according to this study, it was half a percent. Moving on, because I'm sure you guys already know the gist of that article. I don't even need to go into it because it says the same thing that's been said countless other times. If you're truly interested in, you know, learning about that and want to read the article down in the bottom of the description, click the like button and then go scroll down to the bottom of the description and then click on the link to the actual article if you want to read it yourself. I'm not here to force you to digest the entire article. However, this is a moment, an auspicious moment that needs to be celebrated. Vaping store sees record sales post lockdown as smokers try to kick the habit. Yeah. An Ardry vaping store has recorded its largest ever quit attempt by smokers in the town following its reopening after the lockdown. VPZs on Graham Street saw record sales in its new to vaping kits when it welcomed back customers, representing its largest ever uptake. Yeah, that is wonderful news. And it's no surprise 
because if you've bothered to take a look and see what's going on in the UK right now, you'll see that the actual government, the government is literally putting posters on bus stops telling people, don't believe the misinformation you see in the gossip papers. The truth is, this is healthier than smoking. And if you quit smoking, you will improve your health outcome. So it's no surprise that there's a massive uptick of vapors in the UK. And this is actually good for British American tobacco because they're not going to let a market opportunity slip by them. They're going to make some money on this too. 1.4 million new users of vape is what British American tobacco is claiming credit for. And that's just strictly from their heated tobacco and nicotine pouch sales figures for the first quarter. And it seeks to make cigarette alternatives profitable by 2025. How many small guys are going to wash away and trample over on their way to becoming profitable? Well, because they made this announcement, their shares went up 2% in early stock trading because of their good performance in both cigarettes and non-combustible products such as Vipe, its flagship vapor brand. British American Tobacco has set a target of 50 million users of non-cigarette products by 2025 as it aims to burnish its credentials as the modern tobacco company promoting its so-called reduced risk choices for nicotine users. Boy, isn't it nice. Here we have a company that's made its entire fortune off of selling combustible tobacco and tobacco that was covered in sugar and ground up and then people would put that in their mouth. And now, after a pharmacist decided to invent the electronic cigarette because none of these other things empowered him to quit smoking, now they're going to come along and rake in the cash, wash away all the small mom and pop shops, and take over all the sales. Well, it is what it is. That's the unfortunate reality. And that leaves us with our highlighted advocacy group for the week. It's we-vape.org. We vape vape because friends don't want us to smoke. We vape because it's safer than smoking. We vape because it saves us money. And there's so much more. If you go to the website, you can take a look at it. You'll see that their mission is very simple. We Vape aims to bring together vapers from across the UK to raise the voice of our community and to shape the public debate about vaping issues that matter to us. Vaping has saved lives across the UK, and you can learn more about vapers' personal stories or get involved and give them your personal story. Oh, and I bet you thought I forgot. It wasn't clickbait. There's excellent news going on coming from the UK. The British government have announced a review into Swedish snus. It has the ability to help Britain achieve a smoke-free goal. On this journey. Um, and I know that my honourable friend from Windsor will also be interested that although SNUS is currently banned under the regulations, we are undertaking a review and will consider the evidence base there as well. So there you have it. You heard it firsthand. The British government is now going to look into Swedish SNUS to achieve, help them achieve their smoke-free 2030 goals. You never know what tomorrow brings. All you need to do is let your voice be heard. Go join CASA if you live in the United States. If you live in any other part of the world, there's guaranteed to be more than one organization out there fighting for your rights to tobacco harm reduction products. Go look for it. It's easy to find. 
give them five minutes of every single day or just get on Twitter or get on any of the other social media platforms and spend a few moments of your time to make sure that other people have the ability to quit the same way you did. That's it for me. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. I'll be back next week with a couple more videos. And obviously next Friday, another vaping news, science, and advocacy report. That's it for me. I'm DJ Alex. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button below. And hope you enjoy a beautiful weekend. Peace, love, and a hunky vape. It's all you need to stay away from deadly combustible tobacco. Have a great day.